You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Before this podcast kicks off, let's talk about goals. The greatest goal is a native tree crowdfunding campaign, leaving a legacy for Aotearoa New Zealand as co-hosts of the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023. Visit treesthatcount.co.nz to donate a native tree for a brighter future. Football Fever with News Talk ZB's voice of football, Jason Pine and Bonnie Jansen with Trees That Count. Donate an native tree and help us score the greatest goal. Welcome into Football Fever. This is your daily World Cup podcast on the day of the biggest game of football in the history of the women's game here in New Zealand. I'm Jason Pine. Bonnie Jansen not with us today. New Zealand Herald football writer Michael Burgess is along shortly though to preview New Zealand against Switzerland in Dunedin. It is a massive, massive game. We'll go through what New Zealand needs to do to make the knockout rounds and whether they may have to rely on the game which is being played at exactly the same time in their group between Norway and the Philippines. Before that though, let's look back at yesterday's action. Group G, Sweden against Italy in Wellington. Sweden absolutely demolished Italy. Three of their five goals, uh, 5-0 they won it, came from corners. That has secured them. Sweden, a place in the last 16 with a game to spare. Amanda Illestead, Fridolina Rolfo and Stina Blackstenis scoring in the space of seven minutes at the end of the first half. So from 0-0 to 3-0 ahead at half time, and then a couple more in the second half, including one very late on, giving Sweden the win 5-0. And as I say, a place in the knockout rounds with a game to spare. Group F last night, France 2, Brazil 1. Brilliant game of football in Brisbane between two of the pre-tournament favourites end-to-end action, a game which really lived up to expectation. A bit like the United States-Netherlands the other day, where sometimes when two heavyweights collide, you're not really sure what's going to happen. Well, what happened last night was a terrific game. Eugenie Le Sommer, Put the French ahead after 17 minutes. Dabina with her second goal of the tournament, putting Brazil back level in the second half. And then French captain Wendy Renard heading in the winner with seven minutes to go. France had 19 shots to Brazil's 11. What that means is that France are up to four points. Brazil have three. And in the other game in Group F last night, Panama nil, Jamaica won. Jamaica winning their first ever FIFA Women's World Cup match. Alison Swarby heading home and Trudy Carter Cross in the 56th minute. And even more impressive, Jamaica without their captain, Khadija Shaw. She was sent off in the last game. The result knocks Panama out, but it keeps Jamaica well and truly in the hunt. So as I said before, France have four. Jamaica also have four and Brazil have three with a game to go. Jamaica and Brazil meet in their final group game on Wednesday night in Melbourne. That is basically a straight shootout for a place in the knockout rounds. The Football Fever Podcast with Jason Pine and Bonnie Jansen with trees that count. Donate a native tree and help us score the greatest goal. All right, let's have a look at tonight and what is on the line. New Zealand, Switzerland in Dunedin at 7. Norway against the Philippines in Auckland, also a 7 o'clock kickoff tonight. Here's the equation. If New Zealand wins this game, they go through to the knockout rounds. If they lose, they are out. That is the simple part. Now, if this game is a draw, the result of the other game between Norway and the Philippines comes into play. So if both games are draws, New Zealand will go through. If New Zealand draw and the Philippines win, New Zealand are out. If New Zealand draw and Norway wins, it gets a little bit more complicated still. It'll all come down to the margin of Norway's victory and the number of goals they score compared to New Zealand to determine who goes through. So it's going to be a nervous old night between 7 and around 9 o'clock tonight. Let's bring in New Zealand Herald football writer Michael Burgess, who has been in Dunedin for the last couple of days. Birch, thanks for joining us on the Football Fever podcast. How challenging would it have been for New Zealand, the players and the coaching staff, to regroup after the disappointment of Tuesday night's loss to the Philippines in Wellington? Uh, Extremely pioneer, yeah. Extremely challenging. Uh, I'll never forget the looks on some of their faces on Tuesday night uh, as they came through the mix zone after that game in Wellington. You know, there's there's always a cliche about, oh, we're gutted, you know, and that kind of expression, but 
but they were devastated because um, they they knew what was at stake. Um, they knew what it meant to get a result against the Philippines, which was expected. And as it turned out, you know, if they had a one, they, they'd be now sitting in the knockout rounds. If they'd drawn, it would have been very close to the knockout rounds. So I think that's one of the keys to today is if they've actually actually moved on, actually got over that, that defeat because um, they don't want any mental baggage uh, going into this one. And certainly the, the noise from the camp, from the coach, from the players that we've spoken to this week is that they have moved on. Um, so we, we just have to hope that, that that's indeed true. Do you expect any changes to the starting eleven tonight? I do. I think I feel that Olivia Chance will come in. Uh, they need her. They need her creativity and her vision. Uh, but it is quite tricky for Klimkova because um, there's a few different options in terms of the formation. Um, Personally, I feel that four four two as they played against Norway suits them best. I like Percival and Steinmetz in centre midfield together rather than a midfield three where I felt Steinmetz got a bit she's not as suited to playing on, on the right hand side of midfield as she did against um against the Philippines. I also like Jackie Hand and Hannah Wilkinson together up front as we saw against Norway. I felt Wilkinson got a bit isolated against the Philippines in sort of the lone ranger role. But if you play a four four two um, chance doesn't work as well on a, in the wide midfield role and uh, you've got Ali Riley in that flank too and neither of them can really bomb forward so do you play a 4-4-3 which Chance is maybe more suited uh, 4-3-3 Chance is more suited to so certainly some, some interesting options for Klimkova but yeah I can see Liv Chance, um, Liv Chance coming in I think they've realised they need uh, what she does provide Switzerland only have to draw to go through, draw or win, to go through to the knockout rounds. What do you think that will do to their approach? Yeah, interesting question, Pine. I asked um, the coach and the captain about that yesterday, and you know, I just got a sense that they're very, very happy with the position they're in. Um, the coach said to me that, look, you know, we we want to stay top of the group, you know, so that's implying that oh, we want to win. But I've got no doubt they will be uh, sitting back defensively. They've got a very compact defence. They'll be very cautious, and then they'll play on the counter, which suits them. You know, they didn't even concede. They didn't even... um, The Philippines didn't have a shot against them in that opening game. And then Norway were quite frustrated as well by sort of... They're very very well organised, Switzerland, very resolute. So they'll definitely, I think... um, play that way which will suit them down to the ground and that is the biggest challenge for the Ferns, they've got to be positive you know, they've, they've got to attack but they also uh, cannot afford to concede obviously um, and it's very hard to play that way when you've got a team that can afford to, to park the bus or even a couple of buses what, what, is, your, what is your feel about the the enormity of this game and the effect that'll have on the New Zealand players. We know that that Tuesday was a big occasion, and uh, Liv Chance has said, "Look, maybe, maybe we we were too up for the game. We wanted it too much uh, compared to what Ali Riley and Katie Bowen had said, where they said Look, the Philippines wanted it more." Liv Chance said, "Look, maybe we wanted it too much. Is there any danger that tonight's occasion, this massive, massive game of football, might get to these players?" There is actually, and I thought Olivia Chance was was she's she's very honest, uh, Liv Chance, and I think I think she actually hit the nail on the head. I, I thought they were, you know, there's a term they use in sport about being over aroused, and and I think I think they were. You look at someone like CJ Bott, who you know is a fantastic player and was so good against Norway, but she just in the first half against the Philippines, she made four or five or six uncharacteristic errors, some loose passes. Um, and I think, yeah, the occasion, but also the expectation got to them going into a game where they're expecting to win and probably expecting to win well, you know, is quite, you know, unique for the Ferns. So they won't have, I guess, that same expectation in Dunedin, but it is a huge occasion. I mean, we talked tiny about Norway being the biggest match in Ferns history, uh, and this one probably supersedes it, doesn't it? Because they've got this this amazing chance to go to the knockout stages for the first time so 
I really think that is the crucial part of the equation tonight. They've got to get that energy, desperation, hunger and desire back they showed against Norway, which was down a bit in terms of uh, just, just winning those first and second balls. But they've also got to stay calm and composed and realise that, that there's a full 90 minutes to do this um, and, and just stay focused on, on the game plan and what needs to be done rather than sort of um, you know running around like headless chickens. chickens. Alright, what's your gut telling you? What's your best guess? <laughs> uh, look, I've had this uncomfortable feeling all week that it, it's going to be a draw uh, today in Dunedin. So obviously I guess I hope that A, I hope I'm, I hope that's enough, and B, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope the Ferns uh, do win. Switzerland be very hard to beat. Um, obviously, uh, you look down their team, all their players play in Europe. Okay, fair enough. There's there's quite a few that play in Switzerland, but there's also a lot that play in England and Germany and in Spain. So, you know, they're they're a pretty intimidating team. But but the Ferns, the Ferns can do it. Definitely can 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 do it. Can beat this team. It will all hinge on the first goal. You know, I, I don't think the Ferns can afford to concede um, because trying to score two goals against Switzerland would be a massive uh, task. But if the Ferns score first whenever it comes, then, then it's game on. And and I guess the hope is, Piney. I'm sure you feel the same way that it could be like Eden Park, where the crowd give them that extra ten percent. And the sellout crowd and the noise, which is going to be incredible in Dunedin, um, brings them home. Indeed. Let's hope that uh, if we're chatting at the same time tomorrow, we're talking about New Zealand still in the tournament and in the knockout rounds. Enjoy the day, if that's possible, Birch. And thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah, fine. It's going, to, it's going to be an incredible day and an um, incredible evening, something that maybe hasn't been seen before in Dunedin, just the... Uh, the noise that will be created in the stadium and you can't wait. But as you, as you implied just then, it, it's also going to be extremely nerve-wracking, isn't it? It certainly is, mate. Thanks indeed. Michael Burgess from the New Zealand Herald. Read him at nzherald.co.nz. Some terrific stuff up this week in preparation for this game tonight. Great to have him on the Football Fever podcast with us. While this podcast takes a half-time break, let's talk about The Greatest Goal, a crowdfunding campaign leaving a legacy for Aotearoa New Zealand as co-hosts of the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 by asking fans to donate a native tree. Each native tree costs just $10, and whether you donate one or many, you'll be contributing to amazing restoration projects across Aotearoa. Visit treesthatcount.co.nz to donate a native tree and help us score the greatest goal. Looks like we're ready to kick off the second half. The Football Fever Podcast with Jason Pine and Bonnie Jansen with Trees That Count. Donate a native tree and help us score the greatest goal. All right, so as well as the New Zealand game tonight, the other game in the group, as we know, Norway and the Philippines kicks off at exactly the same time, 7 o'clock tonight at Eden Park in Auckland. So you kind of got to keep eyes on both. Um, or we'll actually only do <laughs> just to, as far as the New Zealand result is concerned. Just to recap here, if New Zealand win, they're in. If they lose, they're out. Um, if they draw, then the other game does come into the equation. So that game's at seven o'clock at Eden Park tonight. Norway against the Philippines. The Philippines. I mean, they'll they'll back themselves. They know if they win, they're in. Norway don't have that luxury. They can win and still miss out depending on what happens down in Dunedin. So, yeah, there's all to play for in that one. Also today, the final second round games in Group H, both of these across the Tasman. South Korea, Morocco and Adelaide, that's a 4.30 kickoff. They both lost their first game. And Germany against Colombia. Sydney, 9.30 tonight, both winners in their opening fixtures. So a win tonight, depending on the result in the South Korea-Morocco game, might also be enough to see Germany or Colombia go through if they can get that win later on tonight in Sydney. That is Football Fever for today. I hope it's helped to get you through, well, 15 minutes or so closer to kickoff in Dunedin under the roof tonight. It's set to be quite the occasion, nerve-wracking and exhilarating in equal measure. We will break it all down for you tomorrow 
when a fresh episode of Football Fever hits your podcast feed at around about this time. Enjoy the game tonight, if that's possible, and we will see you tomorrow. In this post-match review, let's score the greatest goal by donating a native tree to leave a legacy for Aotearoa New Zealand as co-hosts of the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023. Visit treesthatcount.co.nz to donate a native tree for a brighter future. Football Fever Podcast with Trees That Count. Donate a native tree and help us score the greatest goal. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.